Okay, so welcome to the second series of our Ant Deployments video. In the last video we have looked at how to install Ant on a uh, macOS machine. If you have missed the video and you haven't installed Ant yet, feel free to go back. I will also link it up here. Um, if you have installed it, we are actually ready to we are actually ready to take the next steps, which is actually retrieving and deploying fields from one or to another. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to look at our source org, which is my talk style source org. And actually, we simply want to create a um, field only on the account object. So let's do that. Let's create the new field over here. It will be a text field. Simply click on next. You know, keep this pretty much to the defaults. Let's call this one end field. Oops. Again, that's all life. So there will be a few more mistakes, I'm sure. And we want to give this one a, a naming convention TS for talk Salesforce. Um, this is our field. So I've added the description just to make sure that we um, see that this information is also being deployed. We leave everything as it is for now. We hit next. Pretty straightforward as you can see. And we said it will be visible to admins only. We hit next. Um, no page layouts for now. So we just want to make sure that the field is coming over. We can look at more complex or more realistic deployments and a few follow-up videos. We'll save that one for now. So now let us actually go ahead and um, add this field to our package XML file to make sure that Ant knows what uh, it needs to retrieve and what it needs to deploy eventually. So I've prepared the, the framework here already. We want to take a custom field um, that's being described in the metadata by this tag. The name here is custom field. Since we've made this field visible for the admin profile, we also want to add the profile. Otherwise, um, field level security and visibility does not come over. And what we need to do in here is we need to tell our system what object this field is in. It's on the account object. And if I remember correctly, it should be and field underscore TS score underscore C. Let us just look at it to be sure. Um, let's actually copy and paste that one to make sure we don't have any errors in here. And save the package XML file. So we are ready to go here. And now let us um, go back to our directory. Let us open our terminal and now we will tell Ant to retrieve this information we have defined in our package XML file. Again, it should only retrieve the following. It should retrieve one field from the account object, the field we've just created, and it should retrieve the admin profile to make sure that field level security is coming over as well. So if you recall, and this is where the build XML file comes into place, if you recall, we have a um, few commands we can execute here. First of all, we want to retrieve this information because right now this information is only living in a text file, but we don't have this information downloaded, so we don't have the actual metadata. It is living in our org, but it is not living in our machine. So what we need to do is we need to retrieve the metadata from our source org first. Um, if you recall, we have two retrieve commands. If we would be using a sandbox, we would have to call the retrieve sandbox command. In our case, we're using a developer org, so that's um, a production org in this case. And this is important because based on this description, 
and knows if it should uh, direct to the login.salesforce or the test.salesforce.com URL. In this case, we want to call the retrieve prod command. I'll leave the, the folder, the AND folder open here while I'm executing the script because then we will see what is actually happening. So let us call our command. Um, we want to go to the AND folder first. You can do that by typing in CD um, AND. As you can see, now we are in the AND directory. And now I want to execute my command, which is retrieve prod. Now let's see what will be happening. And is giving us some information of what is it executing right now. As you can see, it created a folder named deploy, which has been created over here. And now it's asking Salesforce to give us this information. So it's still retrieving. And hopefully it should be finished soon. And there you go, the build is successful. It took us um, 37 seconds to retrieve all information. And it even gave us an ID we, can re we could refer to if we wanted to. So now let us look at the new created folder again. Up here it's saying, okay, it created this following directory. Why is it doing that? Because we have told our um, AND script to do that in the build XML file. As you can see, it executed this command, make dear deploy. And this is what our script has actually done. So now if you go to that deploy folder, we can see our package XML file again. Let us open it and see how it looks like. As you can see, it contains one custom field and the profile. This is the file we have been using before. Uh, let us actually go in here. So it has the account object. And hopefully, if we open this file, it should only contain one field because we did not want to retrieve the whole object. So let us open that one. And as you can see, this is the metadata we have retrieved via AND. It uh, contains the API name of the field, the description we have added before. It is not an external ID field, so we can even see that one here. It gives us the label. It gives us the length, so all the properties and attributes of this, of this um, field, basically. And if you look at the profile, we only have retrieved the admin profile and no other profile. And this is, there is a bunch of information here, so I don't want to go into the details. And um, somewhere in here, it should also include information about this field. Let's see that. And there you go. As you can see, the admin has um, permissions for this field, so the admin is allowed to edit this field. That's because we have checked the FLS ch uh, flag, and it is also readable. And this is really important to understand, because if we would not have added the admin profile, FLS permission would not come over, because those permissions are living on a profile level in Salesforce and not on the object level. And this is why we need to make sure that we add um, this information as well. Otherwise, users quickly tend to believe that the deployments did not work or that, you know, AND is not working or whatever tool you're using. But it's really about understanding the connections and how everything is related in the Salesforce world. So now we have successfully retrieved this information. We're actually good to go and to deploy our field. Let us look at our build XML file to see what commands we want to run. And before we are deploying, uh, we should really validate first, just to make sure that we um, are not going to run into any errors when we are deploying. And again, that's a production work, so that's why I'm going to execute this command, which is validate prod. Um, so let us open back our terminal. I will clear the old information and now again I'm calling out an AND script that's why it always starts with AND and now I want to validate production and my production or uh, target is defined in the build properties file which is up here so this is the target org which I've also opened in Firefox so let us actually go ahead and execute 
this one. We want to validate. It starts the validation. I'm opening my target org and we can search for the deployment status in Salesforce, which should hopefully give us yep, some visuals. And there you go. The deployment is already running. So we know that Ant um, is targeting the right org. Hopefully our validation would work, but as it is the case most of the time, it did not. Let us look at our terminal. And we have an error in here. So let us see what the error is. It doesn't like um, a permission on the profile manage encryption keys. Now, I don't know what this permission is about now. If this would be a um, real project or a real deployment, I'll definitely um, do some more investigation on the root cause of this error. But right now, what we can do is, and this is where the power of Ant comes, comes in, we can actually manipulate the metadata. So let us see how. It doesn't like this uh, permission. So let us see where this permission is living in our profile metadata. Simply search for it. Doesn't like the manage encryption keys. So what we can do is we can simply delete it. And now it's like it has never been existed. And this is really where the power of Ant comes in because we can manipulate the our local files in here. We can manipulate the, the profiles, the objects, etc. But you should really be very cautious with that as you can you know potentially break things as well. So only use it if necessary. Well, let us run another um, validation. So now that we have manipulated the data, let us see if Salesforce will let us go through now with the deployments. We are validating again. And we have another error. I'm sure it is similar. Now it doesn't like another permission. Since I'm using two um, developer orgs, it could be due to some differences we have in here. With real projects, usually you don't face those um, profile permissions that often. This is a profile errors that often. Let us run another validation. This can take a while now. Yeah, same story here. I think you know where we're going. Uh, this is some chatter permission, I believe. Yep. Yep, again. There's a bunch of stuff it doesn't like. Finally, our validation has been completed successfully, and this is great news. Um, even though we had to manipulate a lot now, um, again, that's due to some platform differences between the two orgs I'm using. On real projects, usually you don't get those errors um, that often. However, I'm actually very glad that we faced those because this really showed us where and um, is more helpful than traditional tools because it really allows us to to be more specific on what to deploy. Since we have everything validated now, what we can do is we can go ahead and deploy this field eventually. So let us look at the code we need to execute. It is um, about deploying to production now. So what we will do is we will, as usual, start with Ant. Let me actually clear the rest first, and we will continue with saying and deploy to production. And dum, dum, dum. we go back to the deployment status. 
we should get some visual feedback by Salesforce again. If we don't like the visual feedback, we can also look at our terminal only. And there you go. The deployment succeeded successfully. Um, it's done. We can actually go ahead and look into the details. So that's uh, yeah, second of April, three twenty one. That's right. Was the deployment we have just finished? And if we look at this file, everything is in here. Well, there are no details. So let us go to the account object in our target org. Let us search for the end field. It is here. That's great news. And now, if we open that field. We see that the description came over as well. We see that the rest of the metadata, you know, all the settings we have set before came over successfully. The length is there and now field level security. That's one of the most important things. It is only visible to our administrator. And this is really how you can use and for deployments. Now this was part two of the video explaining how to deploy fields from a source org to a target org. In our next videos we will be looking at how to connect and to services such as Jenkins or CircleCI. I hope you liked this video. Let me know if there are any questions and I'm happy to help there.